Hello and welcome back to Drama Investigator. Blair White can't get a day off to save her life. A few days ago, Blair White had taken to her Twitter stating that she had been doxxed. Well, speculations were true, and so was Blair White's statement that it was allegedly Jessica Yaniv. Jessica Yaniv has since apologised publicly on her Twitter, and Blair White had a lot to say about it. Not that anyone cares or wants to hear what Yaniv has to say, but for the purpose of this video, I have to provide receipts. So here's what she said. Hey everyone, I realised I promised I would be staying off social media but this message is worth your time. I want to publicly apologise to Blair White, I have seen the post Blair made about me releasing her address and the posts she made are pretty much correct. The producer I am working with did get me on a three way call with Blair and he insisted that I do the right thing. I did come clean to Blair and I did tell her I was sorry. What I did was terrible. Blair posted on social media that she was scared and she told me on the three way call with the producer that she was scared a second time. I know what it's like to be scared. In fact, I know what it's like to have my address leaked as well. I hate it and I am really disappointed in myself for my actions. The transgender community needs to stick together. Our lives are rough. We already face so much discrimination and to think I did something against another member of our community makes me very upset with myself. I want everyone to know that I, alongside with the advice of the producer and the other professionals, am going to get my life on track. This apology is just the first step in acknowledging the hurt I have caused. Once again, Blair, I am so, so, so sorry. You deserve better. Our community deserves better. I can guarantee to everyone that I fully realised what I did was wrong. I'm very thankful nothing happened to you because of my stupid choice. Take care everyone, Jessica and Eve. Blair had responded to this by saying, you put my life at risk as well as my fiancé's. You are the devil incarnate and I can't wait to see you in handcuffs. In other news, Blair recently came for a YouTuber called Cat Black and according to Cat's Wikipedia, her channel is focused on discussing race, gender and other social justice issues. Cat has been under fire recently for a comment she had made towards a 14 year old. So the 14 year old was obviously very distressed. Here was the screenshots of their conversation on Twitter. The kid had said, being trans is cool. No, it's not ugly. Kat had replied, being trans is the coolest thing you can be. On the scale of cool, trans is at the top. Sorry I don't make the rules. Stop being such a niffing hipster. The kid had then replied with a tweet that suggested he was going to end his life. Cat had replied, put me in the will. Somebody had responded to this on Twitter saying, this is so gross and so invalidating. If you think being trans is cool, then good for you. But if an individual tells you that trans makes them for valid reasons, you should respect that. You need to apologise. Cat had replied, I'm not going to tweet about this all day. I do not care if the trans community forgives me for this. That is not my interest. I was wrong. I misread the situation. I've addressed this several times already. I don't see that as productive and I'm not interested in the performance. Blair White had responded to this by saying, Cat, please stop calling yourself a trans activist. You encouraged a 14 year old to kill themselves. I can't imagine a more counterproductive thing to use your platform for while masquerading as an activist. You are an awful, nasty, narcissistic human being. Kat had replied, so I care about the kid, but I don't care about all of this fallout. Genuinely. I'd like to point out that Blair White shared my very wrong and effed up comment to someone I later found out was a trans teenager, but didn't share my video calling out Jessica Yaniv. Blair had responded, I'm not obligated to share your whack ass video where you made the situation entirely about yourself and how insulted you were that people asked you to make it. By this same logic, why didn't you share mine, Kat? Now Kat must have made an apology, but I I have not seen it anywhere. If we rewind a little back to her prior tweets, she had initially addressed the situation by stating, people are going to continue to say that I made the apology about myself, even if I gave the apology that was genuine to me. Not the apology that some PR company would write for me, that's total BS. Being a person who has been a teenager expressing or ideation online and subsequently being told to themselves. I intimately understand how this kid felt on the other side and I do genuinely feel terrible that I've ever made someone feel that way. Already said this in another thread but this was a response made when I read this person as a transphobic troll, not a real trans teen reaching out in pain. I deal with a ton of transphobic trolls who claim to be trans. It's hard to decipher who is who and what's what. But this was so obviously a situation where I didn't need to say anything, even if they were a troll. It was super unnecessary and the impact was that someone who was hurting hurts more. That is a complicated conversation to me. My callous reaction came from being a person who has been I'd baited quite a bit. It was still wrong and I've already said that it was. The effed up part is that I very much understand where the kid is coming from, where transness seems like this negative thing and you don't even want to hear positive stories of transness because you're in so much pain. Oof. 
I've been there and I could have responded quite differently. So much of what I do is in the interest of giving that angry teenager I was, who felt that way, a ray of hope and this contradicts that. This kid needs space to vent and cry and be upset. That's incredibly valid. Yes, it bothers me to some degree that despite all that I've done, people so eagerly believe that I would say this to someone I understood was in that situation and wasn't one of the numerous trolls I interact with, only because that's not who I am, but I said this. I haven't reached out directly to the person, though they have seen my thread, mostly because I don't believe in doing so, in order to save the face or cover my ass. Again, I am not interested in that, nor am I interested in forgiveness. I was wrong. I would rather be real than fake. I don't believe in apologising for the sake of apologising. I also understand that people who are eager to believe that I am a terrible person already felt that way, or were waiting for a reason to feel that way. I don't really care. And that's why I am not going to continue to address this. I'll keep the thread pinned, but I am not going to respond to every trans account tagging me asking me to apologise. I've already said how I feel and I'm not going to read lines to save face. I connect with this person on numerous levels and it's a very personal thing to me, so I will reach out to them when I have something more to say that comes from my heart. Someone had replied, cool, and we're allowed to criticise you for what you said and for your apology. You made your apology about yourself. No one wants a backstory, just an apology. Under your tweet, I see you're still making it about yourself, Ellie Mayo. Kat had replied, I would like you to lay out exactly what you want, because my problem with this isn't the criticism. Criticise me. I was obviously wrong, but what are your lists of demands, and does that take precedent over me actually having a conversation with the person in question? What would satiate you, and please you? Should satiating you so that you feel differently about me being something I prioritise or care about? Should the focus on my apology be sticking to your script so suddenly you, a stranger who wasn't involved, will forgive me? Should how you and many other people feel about the apology be more important than how the person affected by my words feels? I want to understand. Somebody else had said, so much of this thread in the previous one is just, here are the details of my past that absolve me, and I feel very icky about it. Kat had replied, why do you think I seek absolution? Why do you think that is why I bring up my experiences with why do you read it in that way? And why should I be invested in you absolving me? I bring up my experiences because I understand that pain. I have a very hard time buying, I'm sorry I said that and I shouldn't have said that, would be the apology you'd accept. And again, I don't need you to accept my apology, but tell me what would satiate you. Somebody else had tweeted, I think a lot of your thread is dismissive of the very, very legitimate criticism trans people have slash had of your first thread and replicates a lot of your initial missteps. The amount of apology devoted to explaining yourself slash your past being one of them. Can you go into detail about why? My initial misstep was me misreading an actual trans person as a transphobic troll. Are you saying that the commonality between the two, with correct context, is referencing my own experiences while not entirely accepting another person's? Another person had tweeted, I'm just catching up on what happened. I'm not trans, so maybe I shouldn't even be responding. I think no matter what, there will always be people who won't accept it, but it seems that I'm sorry will do a lot. I see it asked for a lot with bad apologies. Kat had replied, I have a problem with that, not the words. I think saying I'm sorry is valid. I also think it's very easy to say and not actually mean. How many times has someone said I'm sorry to you to avoid conflict and then went on to do the same shit? That feels fake to me. I don't think there's an apology I could construct that will ever be accepted and I don't want strangers to accept my apology to a specific person. Again, I'd rather say what's true to me than say what feels like an empty word to save face. Another person had tweeted, yes, and I also think that the I don't care about being uncancelled tone is condescending to those who take issues with how you've handled the situation and belittles the gravity of the conversation. Kat replied, okay, I think that's a really valid point. My issue with these conversations is that people push people into making public apologies. I understand why that is, but that is mostly done to save face. I am not interested in being facious and saying the right words to save face. It bothers me because I am genuinely sorry and I do feel very bad, and I talk about my experiences because I know what it feels like to be that kid and it effing sucks. I never want to make someone feel the way, and I did. At a certain point, in these conversations, it doesn't matter if I'm actually sorry, it doesn't matter if I understand why I said what was wrong, it matters that I do public mea culpa for the forgiveness of others. I think that misses the point. There is no collection of words that will ever get people to believe that I'm being genuine. It is impossible for me to say the right words. I don't want to say the right words. That misses the point of an apology. Somebody else had tweeted, how is it me saying you need to apologise without making it about yourself a list of demands? Explain quickly, Ali Mayo. Do you actually care if I'm sorry? This is what I'm trying to 
figure out, do you believe that I'm being disgenuine? And to add to this, this doesn't bother me at all, but is this part of the apology process? Is this helping me productively address the issue? I'm having a hard time understanding what you people actually want. Do you think I'm not sorry? And she had attached screenshots of her Instagram comments. Somebody had said, I believe if you were truly sorry, you wouldn't have had to make the entire situation about you and your past experiences. Alright, so that's the point. You would believe that I was sorry if I just said, sorry I said that, instead of expressing how I understand why I did what was wrong. Why are you so eager to believe that I actually want a trans teenager to themselves. Why is it that easy? This is my point. You want blood. You don't want an apology. You don't even care about the kid. Somebody else had tweeted, even doing this as a joke is horrible and saying that to a kid when you are the adult and the situation is horrible. I'm 16 and I know my generation is depressed as shit and then being trans is another layer. From Jessica and Eve to this proves that you don't care about children. Kat had replied, yeah this is gross and I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that you're not terribly fond of trans people in general. I condemned Jessica and Eve and here you are trying to say that I support f off. I never said I didn't make it about me, I did. I made it about me because I've been a teenager and I understand how hurtful what I said is to you. When you're in that age and you feel that way, that's why I'm genuinely sorry and regret misreading the situation. Somebody else had said, or maybe you could have made an actual apology and not your pity me BS. I thought that you weren't going to tweet about this all day. What happened to that? Seems that was put to the side in favour of trying to convince everyone that you aren't actually garbage. Kat had replied, how many times can I express that I do not care if you like me or not, or forgive me or not. I don't want pity, I've never responded positively to to pity in any situation, including when I've been People will always believe I'm a bad person, I am used to it. I am the villain in many people's timelines, even before I say anything or do anything. People have never needed a reason to dislike me. One of the earliest comments I ever got on my YouTube channel was when I was 15, with someone telling me to myself. I, since then, had attempted to several times. I know what it feels like, which is why I'm sorry. I never protected Jessica Yaniv, that's not an argument I've ever made and I've never defended her, so yeah, that's a shitty accusation. So I care about the kid, but I don't care about all this fallout, genuinely. I'd like to point out that Blair White shared my very wrong and effed up comment to someone I later found out was a trans teenager, but didn't share my video calling out Jessica Yaniv. I don't need her, she's referring to Blair White, to share anything of mine. I don't think much about her, I mostly enjoyed the video that she did with Jessica Yaniv. I just wanted to point out she's very selective when she chooses to mention me and it's all very intentional. And this is why I really dislike this shit. Not because it's bothering me, but because all this fake pearl clutching. You don't really care about a or teenager. Half of you eagerly bring up trans statistics to shame people out of transitioning. Stop pretending. I hate when people pretend to be upset about some shit that's effing real. Trans is effing real. I hate seeing people pretend as though they give an F when they're just looking for a reason to call me out. It's really gross to me, but I know you'll keep doing it. Someone had said, do a better job next time, looks like he left the job half finished. Kat had responded, so these are the people rushing to my page to tell me about how what I said to a little trans teenager was wrong. I just want to point this out and highlight it. These people do not care about they do not care about the delicate life of trans children, they don't care. But as an aside, I believe there are valid criticisms being made. I just want to point out that these are people concerned trolling, like they really care if a trans kid kills himself or doesn't. They don't. Most of these folks want us Somebody else had said, doesn't bother, makes multiple posts. Your friends with Boogie2988, aren't you? Dumbasses. Kat had replied, related. Boogie2988 came up to me at an event and tried to blame me for his that he is apparently planning. I've said this in other tweets, but I've been in several abusive relationships where people have attempted to make me feel bad because they were It's taken me years to understand this in a manipulation tactic that is incredibly abusive. So when he said this to me, I just let him talk, I smiled, and eventually had to be pulled away from the conversation by another YouTuber. That sort of reaction was beneath the put me in your wall comment that I made. Understanding that often things like this are said to manipulate, that's incredibly shitty. This kid is 14, and when I said that to them, I thought they were just a random troll. I feel really shitty saying that to them, knowing the situation now. I understand lashing out as a teenager, so I don't think they were being intentionally manipulative. In general, my response to debating is to wish them well. I'm not falling for that abusive tactic again. That's the exact reason I shaved my head in 2012, because someone told me that they were going to 
themselves for something they gaslighted me into believing I did to them, which I of course didn't do, but in an abusive relationship you start to believe things about yourself that don't align with reality. I have a really bad reaction to that sort of stuff, I will maintain though that I shouldn't have said anything, didn't need to say anything and that I was wrong. I have no resources, I have endured harassment since I was a teenager and I have learned to stomach it and not allow it to impact me in a meaningful way. You get thick skin when you do this job, my advice is generally to log off, which I should do now. Okay so I'm logging off because I know me, but actually as I was thinking this I wanted to genuinely apologise to anyone who follows me slash has seen my tweets slash the tweets I responded to who currently deals with thoughts. This is probably unnecessarily hurtful to you, I'm sorry. Now leading on from this, Jessica Yaniv. Both Blair and Kat have made videos talking about the allegations surrounding Jessica. Well when Blair had live streamed her response to being doxxed allegedly by Jessica, Jessica was actually sitting there watching her live stream and posting comments. Some of the comments were really weird, didn't really make sense, a lot of people miss seeing these comments, so here's what she had to say. Find me sister and kick me out. Don't be having other people do it for you girl. I didn't dox you girl. Hi Blair, love heart. Seriously girl, if you want to talk then do it through my agent girl. File a lawsuit against me sister, let's do it. It's a coincidence girl, I don't dox people. I have been doxxed myself and it is gross. What are your thoughts on everything? Let me know in the comments. That's all for this investigation, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell. My social media will be linked down below and I'll see you guys in our next investigation.